All right, hello everyone, it's Silver Kyle, and today we are going to be taking a look at The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan and the different uh, formats that we have to read this book, uh, and essentially the entire series, as this is book one of 14 of these massive fantasy books uh, created by Robert Jordan in the 1990s, and eventually into the 2000s, uh, that was finished by Brandon Sanderson uh, for books 12, 13, and 14, as unfortunately, Robert Jordan had passed away, but he had chosen uh, Brandon Sanderson as his successor, giving him all his, his notes on how he wanted to complete the series, along with even some sp specific scenes for those books that he felt very passionate about. Uh, and I've never read that to, up to that point. I got up to book nine, and book nine wasn't out yet, so I moved on to other things, and I've tried to go back a few times. This is going to be my fourth time uh, trying to complete this series, so the fourth time ever reading uh, The Eye of the World, which is the first book in the series. But this isn't going to be a, re a review of the stories themselves. I'll probably talk a little bit about it, uh, but for the most part, it's a review of the bo of the actual books and not the stories. Um, and then there will be reviews of these stories themselves once I start rereading them again, uh, which will take some time because it's 14 books. Um, so obviously we do have the paperbacks and I think that's what we should focus on first because that's how I was introduced to the series. I ended up getting a book like this and I got the triple pack here because I couldn't find this book online anywhere. And this is what I, this is the only book that I kept losing. I have all my other books like this, uh, but I could not find, or I, I, I always would always lose this book. This is going to be, my, this is my third copy because I would always lend this book out and, and people would just lose them. Uh, I have no problem really lending out these books because, you know, the spines are going to be like that because I, I, my book, my original book looked like that. And my second book like, looked like this. And now my third one, which I haven't touched at all, like ah, there's tape on this one. Like I know it was used, but blech. I don't understand how people can just destroy their books like this. What are they doing to them? Um, the spines, I understand. That's, that's a well-read book. That's, I understand that. So this is, this is what you would normally get. Uh, and it is, it retails for $6.99 in the U S and $9.99 in Canada, so seven in the U S and 10 in Canada. If you can still find them, I feel like you have to go into a store uh, to find them. Cause I had a hard time finding them online. Um, so this is how I read the book and it is a massive book, right? Like this is 814 pages, but that includes, I think, a few chapter, the next chapter in the second book. And it also includes the glossary, which is extremely important. I think it's like 700 pages. Yeah. It's, um, glossary starts at there. Seven, eight, 782, uh, is, is the first book in the, uh, mass market paperback format. Uh, I also really love this art. This is this set the mood for the series for me, and I absolutely adored it. I know that not necessarily everybody is a fan of these, uh, this art style, but I love it. And inside, we get for the first book anyway, we get more uh, art. I think this is the second town that they're in. Probably, uh, it's definitely not Eamon's Field or Two Rivers where they start off. I think it's Barlin or Barley. I can't. I honestly can't remember. I start, that starts with a B. Uh, but I believe that that would probably be the second uh, town that they visit. And that just, oh, isn't that so comfy? Like, oh, I love that. I absolutely love it. But the one negative about that is that inst uh, normally with all future books, we ended up getting, I, I, I assume it's going to be in this one. I know it's in my copy. Yeah, the map of the world. And that to me is very important. The glossary is extremely important to be able to go back and, you know, what the heck are they talking about? What the heck is in their draw? What is the great blight? What all these characters, because there's a crazy amount of characters in, the, in this series. And um, when you, when you look at the map, I'm going to open up an, another book here to show you the map. But yeah, this book, uh, this world is second only to J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, in my opinion. And honestly, there could be arguments made that it could rival it and, and honestly take the first spot because of how incredible the world is and how detailed the peoples are, the cultures, uh, like tear, tear. I don't know. I always, I, in my mind, it's tear, but it, it's, it's spelt tear. Uh, is so different for Tarvalon, so different from the Arid Domain, so different from Ilion, so different from uh, Eamon's Field. Like, they're all the Great Blight, uh, um, uh, the, the Ale Waste. Like, there's so much here uh, that are so different. And the, the peoples that, that come from there and, and their views, their social structures, 
incredible. Uh, if you want a really detailed world with a lot of lore and you really like Lord of the Rings, this is the next step in my opinion. I, I feel that I, I, I loved these stories. So um, that's the one nice thing uh, about the future books is that if you end up going the paperback route, you will miss out on the map in the first book, but, but you do get this nice art. <laughs> um, and then afterwards you'll, you'll get the um, maps. So that's the paperback route. Cheapest version, uh, but the font as well is rather small, which is to be expected in a paperback. Then let's go, let's go with the hardcover. I mean, this to me was the reason why I did this video because I just recently got the hardcover for the first time. Uh, but let's let's save the, uh, the, the soft cover for afterwards. So obviously you're looking at a much bigger size right? It's massive compared to the paper, mass market paperback. And uh, the problem is though that you're going to probably have to go into these books. This was brand new, uh, but I ordered it online and it has some scuffs because it's so old. This was made in 1990. So it's, you know, th over 30 years old, but it's essentially the same thing as this book, right? Very similar. Uh, plain blue for the hardcover itself. And then the negative, there's no map. And to me, the map is crucial. I don't know if the other books in the series will be like this. I will take a look at it afterwards, obviously. Then we get the glossary starting at uh, page 658. So 659 is the glossary. So we're getting, you know, it's not nearly as many um, pages, about a uh, hundred less here, a little bit more than a hundred less uh, for the actual story itself. Uh, and the font, as we can see, is uh, bigger on the hardcover, as you would expect. And that I do like that because when, especially with less pages, uh, because you're reading the same amount of you're reading the same amount of words, but the pages go by faster because they're longer, right? So I get to, I, it's like, oh, I only read ten pages, and this one it might be like fifteen or something like that. It's not actually, that's not exactly the com fair comparison, but I'm just saying that I like having less pages because then I say, oh, I'm only this many pages from away from a chapter so I can keep going. It motivates me and, and that does help. And also it's easier on my eyes to be looking at um, a bigger font. And now we have arguably the best way to read the books. Oh, and so the hardcover is... Um, $39.99 in the US and $55.99 in Canada. I do feel though that you can get the, I, I, I paid maybe $33 for this brand new in Canada. So I feel like because they're older, if you, as long as you can find them, uh, you will be able to get a, uh, a better price for them, but still the most expensive one. Then we have the soft cover, but still oversized. And as we can see, they are very comparable. Not much of a difference, honestly. This is just a little bit bigger. The pages are a little bit, I guess, high. Uh, the height is more, so they're a little bit longer. And then with this, though, I don't like the art style. I find I find that they're very plain compared to this. This this lands me directly into um, the Wheel of Time world, whereas this doesn't necessarily. But it's it's only art. It's not that big of a deal. And this retails for. $19.99 in the US and $22.99 in Canada. And we get the biggest map version. And I feel that that's very important. You don't get that in the hardcover. And the font is even bigger than in the hardcover, which I will give you a quick comparison of as well. So let's open that up. the both so as you can see it's actually bigger it's it's bolded though in the hardcover and i do like that so if that matters to you bigger font in this one definitely cheaper you get the map you get the glossary as well the glossary is there too and the glossary starts around like seven page 720 so um, a it's in between the hardcover and the mass market paperback. So now you just got to pick kind of 
what you prefer. Do you like having a smaller book going the cheaper route and eventually you will have the maps? Do you, or are you, are you a fan of the hardcovers where you pay a little bit more, but you don't get the map in the first book anyway, or you get the best version of almost everything except that it's not hardcover. That's the only negative of this and that maybe it doesn't have the same art, but not everybody's a fan of this art. So that's another thing too to, to, uh, to consider. I will be doing an overview of every book uh, as I as I get them, and I will be doing a review of all the stories as I'm reading them as well, so just to kind of give you an all an idea. But I just wanted this to be out, put out there that if you like Lord of the Rings, fantasy, Game of Thrones, and you've never read The Wheel of Time, I strongly recommend it. Also, because they did recently get uh, they're starting a TV series uh, of the series uh, of the entire series, and I really wanted to do well because I would love to have it all uh, completed. I I. I, st I still will probably think that the, the series themselves, like I always side with the books for the most part. Um, but yeah, man, what an incredible series. And um, that's the overview. That That's, that's you know, my recommendation. If you want to start it off to see if you would like the book, maybe start with the, the mass market paperback. And then going from there, either picking up the um, uh, softcover paperback or the hardcover, depending on how you like to collect your books. So... That's it. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this. If you read The Wheel of Time and uh, yeah, you have been bearded in. Beardage.